In this lecture, we are going to discuss the OECD AI principles. Now, you'll remember from the end of domain one that we looked at the OECD classification framework. And I just wanted to clarify here at the outset that these are different. The principles are separate from the classification framework. Additionally, moving forward, you're going to see a lot of the same acronyms being applied to different documents. So it's really important that you don't latch on just to the organization, that you're looking at the document name as well. And so here we're looking at the AI principles from OECD. We're going to begin with a little bit of information about the principles to put them in their proper context. And then we're going to look at the five principles in depth. One quick note here up front, there is a lot of text that's going to be on the screen here, and I'm going to be reading through all of that text. The reason I'm doing this is because I feel that the text that's attached to each one of these principles is a really good summary of the spirit of these principles. Looking just at the, the top level principles themselves is okay but it really doesn't do justice to what the OECD is trying to do here. Similarly, as we're about to see, these, these OECD, OECD AI, AI principles, principles are the basis for numerous other principle frameworks and operational governance frameworks as well. So my feeling, my belief is that if you understand these OECD AI principles really well, it's going to make understanding the rest of what we're going to be looking at throughout this domain a piece of cake. About the principles, they were initially adopted in 2019 and were just very recently updated in 2024 by the OECD. These AI principles were the first intergovernmental AI standard, and they're being used to shape policies and create risk management frameworks. RMF is an acronym that you're going to see a lot of throughout the whole course, and RMF refers to Risk Management Framework. At the time of recording, there are 47 adherents to these principles, including the EU, the US, and the United Nations. And again, the principles that we're going over in this lecture, you're going to see throughout the rest of the course. The five principles are... Inclusive growth, sustainable development, and well-being. That's principle number one. Principle number two is human rights, democratic values, fairness, and privacy. Number three is transparency and explainability. Number four is robustness, security, and safety. And number five is accountability. I know that the first few of these are quite a mouthful, but it's important that you do remember these they're almost certain to come up on the exam in some form or another. And again, these principles, because they were the first intergovernmental standard, have been incorporated into all of the other frameworks that we're going to be looking at in just a little bit. Again, the first AI principle is inclusive growth, sustainable development, and well-being. And the text that accompanies this, again, really helps to explain the spirit of this principle. And it goes as follows. Stakeholders should proactively engage in responsible stewardship of trustworthy AI in pursuit of beneficial outcomes for people and the planet, such as augmenting human capabilities and enhancing creativity, advancing inclusion of underrepresented populations, reducing economic, social, gender, and other inequalities, and protecting natural environments, thus invigorating inclusive growth well-being, sustainable development, and environmental sustainability. I think you'll agree that having this text complement the top line at principle itself is really very important, and this is the format that we'll be continuing with throughout the rest of this lecture. If you are looking for keywords to latch onto, I've highlighted those throughout the text as you can see. The shade of blue is slightly darker, and I've bolded those key terms and phrases. Principle number two, human rights, democratic values, fairness, and privacy. AI actors should respect the rule of law, human rights, democratic, and human-centered values throughout the AI system lifecycle. These include non-discrimination and equality, freedom, dignity, autonomy of individuals, privacy and data protection, diversity, fairness, social justice, 
and internationally recognized labor rights. This also includes addressing misinformation and disinformation amplified by AI, while respecting freedom of expression and other rights and freedoms protected by applicable international law. To this end, AI actors should implement mechanisms and safeguards, such as capacity for human agency and oversight, including to address risks arising from uses outside of intended purpose, intentional misuse, or unintentional misuse in a manner appropriate to the context and consistent with the state of the art. And just a quick note, I have copy and pasted this text directly from the OECD website itself. They use British English, and so the spelling of some words is going to be slightly different. AI principle number three is transparency and explainability. AI actors should commit to transparency and responsible disclosure regarding AI systems. To this end, they should provide meaningful information appropriate to the context and consistent with the state of art to foster a general understanding of AI systems, including their capabilities and limitations, to make stakeholders aware of their interactions with AI systems, including in the workplace, where feasible and useful to provide plain and easy to understand information on the sources of data, input, factors, processes, and or logic that led to the prediction, content, recommendation, or decision to enable those affected by the AI system to understand the output, and to provide information that enabled those adversely affected by an AI system to challenge its output. AI principle number four is robustness, security, and safety. The text is as follows. AI systems should be robust, secure, and safe throughout their entire life cycle so that, in conditions of normal use, foreseeable use, or misuse, or other adverse conditions, they function appropriately and do not pose unreasonable safety and or security risks. Mechanisms should be in place as appropriate to ensure that if AI systems risk causing undue harm or exhibit undesired behavior, they can be overridden, repaired, and or decommissioned safely as needed. Mechanisms should also, where technically feasible, be in place to bolster information integrity while ensuring respect for freedom of expression. And the final AI principle, number five, is accountability. AI actors should be accountable for the proper functioning of AI systems and for the respect of the above principles based on their roles, the context, and consistent with the state of the art. To this end, AI actors should ensure traceability, including in relation to datasets, processes and decisions made during the AI system lifecycle to enable analysis of the AI system's outputs and responses to inquiry appropriate to the context and consistent with the state of the art. AI actors should, based on their roles, the context, and their ability to act, apply a systematic risk management approach to each phase of the AI system lifecycle on an ongoing basis and adopt responsible business conduct to address risks related to AI systems, including, as appropriate, via cooperation between different AI actors, suppliers of AI knowledge and AI resources, AI system users, and other stakeholders. Risks include those related to harmful bias, human rights including safety, security, and privacy, as well as labor and intellectual property rights. In this lecture, we have gone over the five OECD AI principles Remember that these differ from the OECD AI classification framework that we looked at at the end of domain one. The five OECD AI principles are inclusive growth, sustainable development, and well-being is number one. Number two, human rights, democratic values, fairness, and privacy. Number three is transparency and explainability. Number four is robustness, security, and safety. And finally, number five is accountability. You need to remember these for the exam. And again, you're gonna see this language throughout the course. So it's really important that you take time to review these and understand these concepts well.